Hey everyone. Let's see if we can get anybody here. I'll drop a link if anybody wants to come up. <clears throat> so uh, I got the Faro box set in and I thought it'd be fun to unbox and take a look at uh, what's in here. Um, I also got the, <clears throat> so here's the box set just came in along with the Woody Shaw Blackstone Legacy. So I figured we can crack these open, take a look at them, uh, some initial thoughts, and then uh, I'll give them a listen later this evening uh, before the live stream. I'm going to try to give them a listen so I can I can uh, tell you guys how they sound. Hey, Nicole. Hey, Nick. Yeah, this is the, uh, the early show. <clears throat> so... All right, cool. Um, yeah, if anybody wants to come up and hang out. Uh, so before we actually unbox it, let's take a look at some of the details. I think, let's see, no, not that one. Here we go. Okay. Uh, so first, let's look at his discography. So um, where this falls in, so Pharaoh's First, which was released um, in 65, this is his ESP disc title. Um, it's his debut title. And where this falls is going to be after all these impulse. He does a Strata East as well, some more impulse. So lots of records on impulse. And then he does one record for India Navigation. And that's what this is. So this is 1976, released in 77. Hey, AJ. And who do we have on here? So there's uh, Faro, he's playing tenor. There's some percussion and some vocals. There's uh, Bedria Sanders uh, on harmonium. Uh, Clifton Jiggs Chase on organ. Uh, Titsiji uh, Munoz, Steve Neal, Greg Bandy, and Lawrence Killian. Uh, I'm not really familiar with, with any of these uh, players, um, but that is who is on it. And... Before we move on, the reviews look like they're kind of lukewarm, um, generally, you know, uh, middle of the road. And I think the little bit of research I did on this, um, this, I think whoever owned Indian Navigation thought they were going to get a title that sounded more like his earlier stuff on Impulse. And this one really sounds a lot different. Um, what's up, Rev? Jazz Bonds Before Dark? Yeah, <laughs> this is the precursor. This is the pregame. So, so this is the title. And I think the next thing I want to show is uh, the Discogs, because I don't believe there's that many reissues of this. And originals, from what I remember, are fairly pricey. So here's uh, what we have. So let's just narrow it down a little bit. So let's look at US pressings. And then we'll look at LPs. So there's five available here. It looks like there's three releases in 77. Uh, there's an unofficial release. I think this is a bootleg in 2008. And then it looks like there's this other one in 2020, which, um, which I've seen before. Uh, but let's take a look at what an original goes for. So if we get the blue cover, which this box looks like it is not the blue cover. This box looks like it is a brown cover. And there are none for sale. And it ranges up to over $1,200. Let's just take a quick deep dive and see what a VG plus copy goes for. Okay. All right. So VG plus, this is in 2023. This is looks like a really good deal. Looks like there's two of them. This looks weird, honestly. Um, there's a near mint one. This one sold for above 900. There's another mint one. These prices are all over the place. Um, so that's kind of interesting. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know what the deal is here. Um, see, this one's over 1200. That's the that anchor on the top end. But yeah, I think generally speaking, this is a really hard record to get. I'm not really sure what's going on with these low prices here. Um, these near mint ones. These look like they sold within a couple days. This sold the same day. So I don't I don't know what the what the deal is with that. Anyway, we don't have to get too much into the weeds here. I just kind of wanted to show that, you know, it can be a pricey record, and there aren't too many reissues. And I think the ones that are available, um, I've heard uh, at least that bootleg does not sound very good. 
I'm, I'm not sure about that one that came out in 2020. Uh, the other thing I want to show, this is, uh, so this box that is being put out by Luaka Bop, and this is their, their webpage, so you can go on and see all the details around it. I did reach out um, to them, and they responded. I forget, I forget the, the person's name who kind of like is the owner of this company. He, he responded saying that this, is a, uh, this was done in the digital realm, and then someone else mentioned that they think it's a needle drop source. Uh, so you know, we'll see how, how it sounds, but I think the source is not from the tape. Uh, but there's some more detail here. And they're asking for $54.99. And this comes with, and we'll look at it, but it comes with the 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 reissue. And then also, hey, Scott. Oh, uh, George, sorry. Hey, George. And then uh, it also comes with a live uh, concert LP. So we'll take a look at that. I did also want to show you can order it on his band camp. And I believe if you get it on the band camp, you also get a digital uh, streaming copy. Um, that you have access to. And then also Amazon has it right now, and this is the best price. So $47.99, 13% off the list. Um, so that's another way to get it. And yeah, I think that's all I want to show in the background. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions um, in the chat. But let's open this up and see it, because I've been eager for this ever since it was announced. I think it was like announced maybe a month a little bit more than a month ago. I think the turnaround was pretty quick on this. So here's the box. Um, the back has them in concert, Pharaoh in concert. Uh, there's some details here. Um, let's see. So yeah, so you get Pharaoh, which I think has three tracks. And then Harvest Time is the live session from 1977. And you get two tracks on that. Um, yeah, so Farrow was recorded August and September 1976, and then this was August the following year. Um, okay, all right, let's give this an open. Have you guys pre ordered this? Are you guys expecting this to come in? Are you excited about this? You know, I wanted to show the price, and I'm kind of I'm kind of uh, scratching my head around what we saw because generally speaking, this, from what I know, in a VG plus copy of this usually is around $800 and it can go up higher than that. Um, but that, that's kind of what I expected it to show. Um, no hype sticker. Take a look here. So the box is nice and stocky, you know, it's fine. All right, so it comes with a, a few things here. So first, I don't know what this is, but we're going to open it up. Um, so the casing is here. We can open it. But before I do that, the back of it has, uh, I think this is like what you'd put in with a film cartridge to to look at the, uh, to, to give some description. Okay, so they're providing some photos. We'll quickly flip through these. Okay, <laughs> that one's pretty good. Okay, not sure what that is. I'll have to look at these a little more closely. So you get some photos. I'm assuming this is maybe of the tour in Rome, something like that. Have to look into this a little bit more. Okay. It also comes with, it looks like these are replica of the concert ticket. Okay. They also cut you out a newspaper clipping. And it's like, you know, not 90 degree cuts. I mean, it looks like they actually cut these things. Um, obviously reproductions. But yeah, so I guess this is probably a review of the night. They give you harvest time, um, the sheet. Right, so that's kind of cool. Another larger photo by Rob Masur, stamped on the back. You get that. So lots of goodies in here. Um, and then these look like these are the film negatives. Maybe some of that. So lots of photography. Let's take a look at this. This looks like the bill. Um, so that's kind of cool. So okay. 
so August 77, on the 11th, Thad Jones, Mel Lewis, Big Band. The 12th, Elvin Jones, Quintet. The 13th, BOA Nova, Boa Nova. Uh, then there's Sonny Rollins, Quintet. He's doing three dates, 16, 17, and 18. Ted Curson. Uh, they're doing Ohm by Damu Ram Mayo. Uh, and then Pharaoh Sanders, this is the 23rd. That's his date. Um, Johnny Griffin is there. He's headlining in a couple days. Skunk Funk is there. Uh, Etta Cameron. Uh, Ferris One. Uh, Neil Hennings Orsted Pedersen with uh, Sved Asmussen, Kenny Drew, and Egg Thig Thigpen. So a nice quartet there. Um, Stan Getz. Uh, and then the last performer to close it all out is uh, Erild uh, Anderson. Not totally sure who that is, but so you get that. That's kind of cool. Okay. So those are the extras. It comes with a really thick um, booklet. So just to flip through it, so you can see level of detail here. So the liner notes are by uh, Eliza, Eric, and Yale. Yale is who, who uh, contacted me when I reached out about the source. So I think they're going to provide a lot of information about the recording, the concert. Um, I'm going to flip through this quickly. But more pictures, very well documented. Um, looks like all different types of stuff here. They look like they have uh, a Farrah Sanders uh, written transcript interview um, from uh, 2022. Lots of other cool stuff in here. Um, looks like there's another interview. Um, just to keep showing you guys what's in here. Do we know where it's pressed and mastered? I think it's in. it was pressed in Europe. Uh, and I'm not sure where it was mastered either. Um, let me, you know what? Hold on. Let me pull up that email really quickly. I think there might have been some deta extra detail in there. So are you guys interested in, uh, in picking this up? Is this something that's been on your want list? I was pretty excited to hear this, that this was being reissued. And this is also, I don't have it with me, but they also, uh, Luaka Bop did the Pharaoh Sanders with floating points that uh, came out, I think in like, I don't know, 2021, something like that. Let me just double check the response here. Chris Bellman mastered. Thanks, George. Yeah, I don't think I, th I don't think they'd said where it was pressed um, in the email, at least. So something we'll have to take a look at. Okay. All right. So let's get into the records. So the first one, as it comes through, is the concert. So this is uh, Lockabop LB5051. Uh, it's in a regular kind of a direct to board jacket with some gloss on it, which is fine. Um, spine has some striping uh, details on the back. Let's take a look at the wax. So it looks like it comes in. It's a sleeve. It's a paper sleeve with a uh, with like plastic inners. Um, really clean. Yeah, there's a CB in the dead wax. Um, you can see like the dead wax section is huge. You see that? It's probably just a few minutes on this side. Um, and yeah, so the labels have more pictures here and here. So yeah, give this a listen later. And then for the star of the show, you know, I was saying if they just did the, re the reissue without the box, I probably would have just gotten that. Um, but it is nice to have this concert as well. I do appreciate that. Okay, this is cool. So the material of the of the uh, jacket is different. It's matte. You can feel it's like nice paper. Again, it's direct to board. Um, it is a gatefold, which I do not believe the original Indian Navigation one is. So 
Harmony Holiday writes the uh, the liner notes inside here, and then there's a picture of Pharaoh. I'm assuming his wife there. Let's see, yeah, Pharaoh and Bedria Sanders. Uh, the back, and let's take a look at the wax. So they, I don't think they replicated the original Indian navigation since that logo is not on here. Um, although, you know, this probably is not too far off in terms of just how like simple it is. Uh, Indian navigation generally, you know, other than their logo was pretty simple. So that's it. This is the inside of the box just for to be complete. But that is the Pharaoh. So I'm going to give this a listen a little bit later. I'll clean them, listen to them, let you guys know. But a uh, really nice presentation. Um, I have to say, I really like this jacket. It's nice. Uh, so there's that. And then the other bonus thing that I got in was the Blackstone Legacy. So I can do a quick uh, opening of that since, since I'm here. So this is put out by Jazz Dispensary. This is easily a $150 uh, title if you were to get the original um, and it goes up from there. So it's gotten expensive uh, and difficult to get too. I don't think there's too many available, at, you know, online at least um, at any given time. Usually there's a couple. Now I know, I think there's been a, a good amount of hype around this. Ken McAuliffe uh, got a promo copy. Gave it a listen and said that it sounds spectacular. The music is top notch. And let's see. So, so this is uh, Woody Shaw with an all-star lineup, including Gary Bartz, Ron Carter, Benny Maupin, uh, all analog mastered from original tapes, Kevin Gray at Coherent, press that RTI, 180-gram vinyl, and a gatefold tip-on jacket. So the premium treatment by Jazz Dispensary. Which is um, they're a, they're kind of a craft label that puts out more kind of I don't know I guess sometimes later more um, funk uh, related material that they have in their catalog. So very glossy, nice jacket. This looks really nice. Back here, who else is on this? Ron Carter's on this. Lenny White, Clint Houston. Uh, the original is, I mean, it's a double LP, so the original is a gatefold. Really nice on the inside. Did a really nice job. Feels really substantial, like more substantial than the like acoustic sound series. It, it kind of feels like uh, the heaviness of a um, Music Matters jazz jacket. Okay. We have the replica contemporary label. I'm pretty sure that's how the original looked with the bolded font. So this came out in 1970, I think. I think this came out the same year as Bitches Brew. Uh, and this was, I think this is his first studio release. And then they did release some earlier stuff, I think later, but it was recorded earlier. But I think this was the official first one. Okay, so this is 71. Which I, it was Bitches Brew 70 or 71. I can't remember. Um, yeah, so wax looks really nice. Oh, it's Bert, it says BG in the dead wax. This says BG. And then it says Kevin Gray at Coherent. There's definitely a BG in the dead wax on both sides of this. So that's weird. I was looking for the Kevin Gray. Did anybody else get this? Can anybody else confirm that theirs, theirs has that as well? That's kind of weird. Usually they don't make those mistakes. Let's go to the second one. Again, same label. Oh, and the craft dinner. I, I like this. I think it's a nice touch, but they do the craft uh, inner sleeve. And then, yeah, BG. So it says, so Bernie definitely cut this. <laughs> so the hype sticker is wrong. It's not Kevin Gray. That's interesting. Someone get Kevin Gray on the phone. Can somebody call the president? 
All right, cool. Yeah, so I'm going to give these a listen. I just wanted to, since I was opening them anyway, I thought it'd be fun just to show because I, I, I was curious to see what was in the Pharaoh Sanders box. So if you wanted to check it out too, I figured I'd be able to show it. And yeah, there's multiple ways to get it. Um, the Bandcamp also has that digital, uh, you get the digital piece free. Um, it looks like Amazon has the best price, but yeah, uh, that's for the Pharaoh. This one um, is for the Woody Shaw. So we'll talk about this more later tonight. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining. Just want to do kind of a quick pop in. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think about this. Drop some comments, um, questions. And yeah, definitely check yours. You know, the hype sticker is Kevin Gray. The dead wax is BG. So th there was a mistake that, that happened there. I mean, either way, I'm sure it's going to sound great. Uh, but it's just interesting that there's that discrepancy. So um, yeah. All right. Well, thanks for uh, hanging out uh, this afternoon. and. I'll see you guys 8 p.m. Eastern. We'll be streaming live with the group. Um, 5 p.m. Pacific, come check it out. And, oh, it's on dark green. Okay, interesting. I think there was, I think there may have been a couple pressings. If the original is dark green, there might be, there might be another one that's yellow. Um, but that's good to know. All right, guys. I'll see you guys later.